First, I want to thank uh, the Board of Selectmen for having us here. I also want to thank the Board of Selectmen for providing us with a liaison. And we're very fortunate to have Peter uh, come on a regular basis and share with us his wisdom and his experience through dealing with the town's government on the Board of Selectmen. Before him, Frank Minorfi, and before Frank, Ralph Vitaco. So we thank you very much for your participation and our, your help in what, what we're doing. Also, I want to thank the people from the uh, Friends of the Council on Aging, whose funds allowed us to put together, uh, to pay the bill for um, John Catlin's work and allow us to present this to you tonight. The um, Center for Active Living is the new name for the Council on Aging Senior Center and now the Center for Active Living sandwich. Uh, we hope to use that as a, uh, um, a fulcrum to get programs moving faster if we are able to have a, a new facility. A couple of years ago I called Doug Lapp and I said, Doug, we need a new Council on Aging building. The, what we have now is just too small. After I said that, um, he said he'd get back to me, and he did, and we talked a little bit about it. Uh, but we then toured Council on Aging buildings in different towns in the Upper Cape as well as Off Cape, including Plymouth and Mashpee and other, um, other known facilities. They generally had a square footage of 16,000 square feet to 10,000 square feet, 12,500 square feet, and everything was in that five-digit category. Our little council on aging is in a 6,000 square foot building, but only occupies 2,709, we count every foot, 2,709 square feet. There are only a couple of rooms that are occupied all the time, and there are frequent times when uh, we've tried to establish planning and board of directors meetings, what I call our, our very nice uh, executive director, Jan Timmons, and Jan would say, well, I'm sorry, but we have a yoga class in there. I'm, I'm sorry. The back room, uh, that's where we're doing Reiki. Uh, and it, she, I must admit that for a person who says no to me almost every time I call, she is very polite and nice, and I want to thank you, Jan, for tr treating me well. Okay, we'll begin our presentation now, and I think, is the slide up? Good. Uh, our current building was built by the Vocational High School in 1986, and that's a direct result of the, uh, what's the name of the act? Uh, the Older Americans Act, which was uh, uh, legislated and put through by Lyndon Johnson in 1965. It really wasn't until 1985 that the Council on Aging in Sandwich was able to have an employee. That, that employee um, was a, a volunteer up until that time. In 85, we began to um, we began to pay somebody to do the job, and we're still paying them. Um, the mission of the Council on Aging is ultimately to advocate on behalf of the Sandwich elders in addressing their needs by identifying and developing sources of assistance. And if you call and talk to our, reach, our, reach, our outreach coordinator or our, so the secretary and, and also Jan, they will provide information that's ultimately valuable in helping all of our family members who are in need uh, of elder care. The mission also provides information for referral, outreach, nutrition, health services in cooperation with other town departments and area agencies. The purpose ultimately of what we're looking at with a new facility hits number three here to enhance the quality of life for seniors and the community by providing educational, recreational, cultural programs and activities. Uh, 
The Board of the Council on Aging, which is essentially the Council on Aging, also sets policy for operation of the Senior Center. We're going to take a look a little bit um, at what we currently have for a building and what we have to offer and then do some comparisons. As of today, 32% of Sandwich residents are over the age of 60. That's almost a third of our population. I know they say 60 is a new 40, and they're right. Our life expectancy is getting longer. We're staying healthier and more active. It used to be we worked, retired, and hoped to get a few good active years in before old age really set in. Uh, just thinking about the future, people will retire and have a whole new life with very, uh, a lot more active years. Uh, just, just think about our Council on Aging now. They're amazing. They provide services to over 1,200 older adults with over 50 ongoing programs, plus a variety of specialized programs. They do all of this with a director, an office manager, an outreach coordinator, a part-time clerk, a part-time volunteer coordinator, and two part-time drivers, and many other wonderful volunteers. Let's talk about our staff support. And again, to emphasize, the um, Sandwich Senior Center currently has three full-time employees, four are part-time, and two of those employee positions are grant-funded. So they are not um, confirmed indefinitely. That group of, of wonderful folks coordinates all of the activities, screenings, and scheduling. The outreach coordinator advocates for Medicare, Medicaid, supplemental security income, food stamps, fuel assistance, and financial assistance, access to health insurance information, SHINE, the SHINE program, elder law attorneys, and the AARP Foundation income tax program. They coordinate the Sandwich Senior Tax Credit program. They coordinate the Global Petroleum Home Heating Fuel program for all ages. They coordinate volunteer opportunities, and they provide outreach programs which allow people to live in their own homes as long as possible. Our current program offerings, which help to reduce isolation and encourage socialization, include health screenings, exercise programs such as yoga, and as John mentioned, Reiki, education and support groups, recreation and socialization, which is so important to prevent isolation, outreach programs, transportation to medical appointments, shopping, and social trips. And they also offer friendly visits, telephone reassurance, and emergency shoppers, as well as volunteer opportunities. The problem with the current building uh, doesn't meet building codes, for one thing. I'm sure if, uh, if anyone's driven by the building, uh, you know what it looks like from the outside. If you haven't stopped inside, um, come on in. Come on in any time and take a look around. There is really only one main room to engage all of these programs. You have to cut through the main room to get to the smaller rooms. Just imagine, you're in the middle of a yoga class and someone needs to get to the kitchen. Excuse me, excuse me, there goes your concentration. <laughs> So the other problem is classes fill up quickly because we don't have enough room to provide some of these the bigger classes. We actually have residents who go to other towns because they can't get into our programs because the class size is so limited because of our space. Here's a look at our current building usage. And uh, John mentioned the 2,709 square feet. 478 square feet uh, is for the offices, plus they converted a closet um, to get an extra 20 square feet out of it. The multi-purpose room, the small meeting room, all of these rooms, uh, you know, are, you have to cut through the main room to get there. And just to give you a kind of a visual, and Jan doesn't like me showing this picture, but um, this is the office, a uh, little cramped in there, and that closet that they no longer had that they now have a reception area, so they had to find room for that other space for their stuff. So many of these programs that are missing from the Sandwich Center for Active Living is because we don't have the space. It's not the resource. For example, if we have a meal planned, nothing else can happen at the same time. We don't have a drop-in area where people come in and socialize. They come in for one program and have to leave because there is no space for them just to socialize and hang around. Um, so we, we would like to, the new center would likely have an area where people can gather and meet and socialize. 
Um, and one of the things that um, are critical absent in the current program is um, a supportive day center. And there are some pretty impressive statistics that relate to why the supportive day center is so critical. We presently have three supportive day centers on the Upper Cape, one at JML and Falmouth, uh, the v which is a medical supportive day center, the VNA center at Tradewinds in Sandwich, which is also a medical supportive day center, and the Bourne supportive day center. Um, there is a critical need for a supportive day center in the town of Sandwich. The following statistics come from the Alzheimer's Association annual report. One in nine people over the age of 65 will be diagnosed with a dementia-related disease. Using the 2017 town census from the town clerk's office, that equates to 408 Sandwich residents over the age of 65 who will be diagnosed with dementia-related disease, 408, based upon the 2017 census. One in three people over the age of 85 will be diagnosed with a dementia-related disease, according to the 2017 town census. The number of Sandwich residents over the age of 85 are 545, which equates to 182 residents over the age of 85, according to the 2017 census, for a total of 590 residents presently living in town with a dementia-related disease. Forty percent of in-home care providers will succumb to a physical or mental health failure before their care recipient. The Alzheimer's Association just released a survey on June 1, 2017, which found that 64% of care providers felt isolated. And a journal of the American Medical Association survey found mortality for care providers to be 63% higher than that for non-care providers. There is an ongoing national trend to develop age-friendly communities. Massachusetts does have a dementia-friendly initiative the purpose of which is to put supports in place for families impacted by dementia-related disease. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to add, the Center for Active Living will provide opportunities for our senior population to engage in a variety of stimulating programs, while our Supportive Day Center will accommodate our residents who may need programming specific to reduced abilities. The benefits would include socialization for our residents with reduced abilities, respite, a critical need for care providers. We will come in line with the dementia-friendly Massachusetts initiative and reduce demands on our emergency response teams. The opportunities at the center would include intergenerational community connections like an intergenerational choir, a memory cafe, reminiscent art and storytelling programs. We would receive recognition as a dementia-friendly community and it would be an educational center for aging issues. So let's take a look at our neighbors. <clears throat> Most towns on Cape Cod have an updated facility to support their older population with the exception of Falmouth, which has just approved construction of a new building. Not to go through all of the figures on the slide before you, the most critical one being that circled in red. In 2020, we can expect our population over the age of 60 to be 9,011. That age group over the age of 60 will increase by 155% within the next three years. As John mentioned, they did travel to a few other um, centers for active living. In Plymouth, with a population of 58,000, there's 60 plus population, 11,556. It was built in 2012. They're bursting at the seams. They've already recognized the need for additional facilities. And they have certain amenities, specifically, for example, they have a gift shop in the lobby. Everything is donated from the local businesses, and all the money goes back into the programs. And I've seen several of those um, types of gift shops in other centers. In Barnstable, the senior center was built in 1999, population 45,000. Their 60-plus population is 16,000. 
An interesting piece of information about the Barnstable Senior Center is that they conducted a needs assessment in the year 2015. Um, they were um, commissioned a group, of, um, a group of staff from UMass Boston at a price of 35000 and two of the most um, outstanding recommendations uh, in the study result is that the center be rebranded. People over the age of 60 no longer identify with being seniors, so they are working on that. And the respondents, they had a 28% response rate, which is pretty good, um, all responded that there was not enough space. And that center, again, was only built in 1999. In Duxbury, with a population of 20,000, their uh, Center for Active Living was built in 2001, and they have already agreed and are planning a 3,500 expansion because they're out of space raising their um, existing space substantially. Lastly, in Mashpee, the Mashpee Senior Center was built in 2004 with residents numbering 4,700 over the age of 60. So we are getting older. Yeah. So you'll be up yeah, yep. um, in 2017, there's 6,415 of us. It's 32%. 2022, 8,331, 41%. And in just 10 very short years, there will be over 10,000 people in Sandwich over the age of 60, representing 50% of the population in town. Well, thank you very much. I've really enjoyed coming back to work with uh, Sandwich on this project. Uh, we did a study back about come on, 2005. Thank you, Jan. And um, we were asked to update that study and revisit where we are today in terms of population and needs. We are also, as architects, have been advocates for senior centers for, for the past 25 years, and each year our buildings uh, develop and grow and expand in their use groups, uh, really based on our experience of working with towns and directors and communities, where we learn a lot about this process. Um, what we did back in 2005 is a very different animal today. I'm going to try and cover the key issues of the design, which was not covered in the previous presentation. And the first one is site, then building plans, a little bit about the cost in present day dollars, and a brief conclusion about what's being built nearby. So on the site, as you can see, we, uh, the seniors have been uh, designated an area that's adjacent to the proposed new police station perhaps with a uh, skateboard park, which we call intergenerational, but I have some great pictures of senior skateboarding, so <laughs> I didn't put those into this one, but they're pretty dramatic. Um, <clears throat> and um, what's really wonderful about this site is, number one, there's a lot of land. There's a lot of adjacent land controlled by the town. There's an opportunity for trails. The nice thing about it is where the sun orientation is and where the north is. Um, often when we look at buildings, we want to make sure in New England, especially, that our program space provides light from the south and southeast and west, and also outdoor opportunities. So we've looked at the site. This is very preliminary. Um, that's what the idea of feasibility studies are. This is our first look at what can be done. Um, and as you can see, I, I usually have a laser, and I didn't bring it with me, but, but we come in off of the um, there's the main entrance. We have a service entrance to the side. Uh, it's really important to separate those out. We come in from the street with a drop off at the service entrance. Um, you can then come back and park. You can then, um, and the nice thing about dropping off is that you can also have a pass by. What happens with elders is that in some cases when you're being dropped off either in a van or with a, with a caregiver, it may take three or four or five minutes to get out of the car and access the building. And not having the opportunity to move other cars past is a real impediment. So our part of our design on the site is to make sure we have that access. You can also then leave the site, but also you can recycle on the site. Thus, if you drop a friend off and you park the car and you have greater mobility, but your friend doesn't or your spouse doesn't or 
you can uh, then recycle back over and pick that person up to leave. A couple more things about the site. It's a little bit pale, I apologize, but on the lower right side, you see a little green um, um, circle up here. That's an outside patio. Uh, really important, and you have a great opportunity in your community to be able to have outside um, access. Um, I always like to suggest very strongly that we need 20 to 30 minutes a day of daylight to help process vitamin D to combine your calcium into stronger bones, which is an important thing for elders. Another innovation that we've been working on is this orange area down there. That's an outside performance area associated with the platform stage that we're suggesting inside the multi-purpose room for lecture programs, but for outside music programs where there's an opportunity for um, uh, outside summertime events. The building itself, um, it's on two levels. Um, lots of people get nervous about two levels. I'm a big proponent for two levels for several reasons. One, it reduces the footprint, which reduces the amount of distance an elder might, might have to walk if you have mobility issues. Uh, we have an elevator and a monumental stair that takes you upstairs. The other issue about two stories, too, is it adds a lot of synergy to the center. Um, our first effort at a two-story building was in Duxbury, and um, I think it was a good idea, but was poorly executed. That was about 10 years ago, 12 years ago. Since then, we've learned a lot about adding synergy to the second level. You can see these various arrows showing up. Uh, the entrance arrow at the top, you can see an arrow at what we call a cafe or meeting area lounge um, heading out onto a, um, an outdoor patio where you can have coffee outside or in. You see the squiggly little lines. I'll talk a little bit about that. But these are open spaces. You can see we have a covered entry, an open plan. The reception is right in the purple area, right at the front entrance to control and have people get oriented. Uh, that's the administration, the cafe, the library lounge is part of that. The multi-purpose room, if you notice in your earlier presentation, your present multi-purpose room, I believe, is about 1,200, 1,300 square feet. This one is designed to be about 3,500 square feet. And what's unique about it is that we've now, that's my open plan, I'll come back to that. Um, we've, we use multi, uh, um, movable partitions that are soundproof. It allows that room truly to be a multi-purpose. It can be set up for the kitchen, which is over on the left there in the pink. So you can have set up for meals, but you can also have a Tai Chi or yoga class uh, there, which is accessible out to the patio to the right here where the arrow is. The large arrow at the bottom indicates the opportunity of having both an indoor and outdoor performance area, uh, especially on the Cape and the warmth down here and the seaside ocean smells and things. It's really a nice Nice opportunity. That squiggly thing that occurred up there, that's the new approach we're taking. We really are eliminating hallways and creating open space with seating, where various program spaces, such as the media room uh, down to the right, or the cafe, which is up at the top with the arrow leading outside, are opened up into um, the main entry hallway. That main lobby is large. It has, has seating. It has an information board. Um, and the, those um, squeaky lines go down into other rooms where there's lots of transparency allowing that connection to occur. When you go to the second floor, we have an open stair that leads up again, a monumental stair. Uh, the neat thing about this stair is that we just finished one recently in the town of Holyoke. Um, and um, we did a little study of that stair. And, we found that 85 to 90% of everybody who uses the center walks up the stairs. And the unique thing about it is I call that stealth exercise. The National Council on Aging says that we should be walking five to 10 flights a day to stay healthy. And um, that stair gives you that opportunity. The neat thing about this stair too, if I go back for one, yep, is that there's a little bench that you sit up there on that you can stop and sit down and look out onto the lobby. There's up here, there's a fitness room. They have visual overlooks into the multi-purpose room. Same with the, um, uh, the classroom down to the site. And there's a series of enclosed classrooms. And part of this, again, is this open plan where everything 
is transparent. So, you've seen, you saw this rendering earlier. This is a first effort rendering of giving you an idea of how you can pick up on kind of the cape look in terms of shingles, um, uh, gray uh, bleaching elements. <coughs> the um, adjacent building, which we're suggesting would be connected in our early designs, we just had it as a freestanding building or the work out the details of it, but it has both um, adult daycare with an outdoor controlled area and a connection to the main senior center through a walkway which would have seating and um, small tables for games and puzzles. Uh, the nursing office is the more rectangular space above. Each one has its own entrance at a uh, covered entryway. And there's also the gray area up to the far right is a medical storage facility for equipment. This is an early rendering of that, and of course we've talked about the fact that this would slide in closer to the main building and have this kind of transparent um, access to the, uh, the uh, multi-purpose room. On the cost, um, we're projecting right now our experiences for the 5% per year of escalation. This is in May 2017 dollars. Um, we're talking about a total cost of roughly $9,703,000, including all soft costs and contingencies and current construction numbers, plus an FF&E, or that's fixture furnitures and equipment, of an additional $200,000. We're trying to be very conservative on these numbers. Again, they're at the vagaries of the public bid process, but generally um, these are very confident numbers. What's happening elsewhere? You heard a little bit about the word senior centers being changed. This is currently happening in Wellesley. It's now called the Tolls Parsons Center in honor of two ladies who donated a large sum of money to the town to build this center. And it's currently under construction and it's going to be opening in about uh, four to five weeks in the town of Wellesley. Also in the town of Walpole, in conclusion here, Again, the name is called the South Street Center, and underneath that will say the Council on Aging, Walpole Council on Aging. So the word Senior Center is now being really eliminated out of the names, um, especially because a lot of these are used for other functions, uh, weddings sometimes, uh, parties, uh, anniversaries. A wedding is really tough if you're going to be having a wedding at your community center and you're telling everybody to come to the Senior Center just doesn't quite ring right. So thank you very much. So as I started the discussion, uh, this is how we look in comparison to other towns. That's why I called Doug Lapp and said, Doug, we need a new senior center. The uh, size and scope and the need is no longer being met. Uh, and Bud, one th question I had of you is, uh, it has been mentioned to me we should go for design build. Clearly, we would like to have the approval of the Board of Selectmen to present something to the town. What do we call it, and how do we get that done? Yeah, I think with a project like this, it probably doesn't make much sense to do design build unless you're actually going to construct it, so you should ask for a debt exclusion to fully fund the project. Okay. Thank you. And that would be a warrant article? Yeah, and a ballot Ultimately. question and a lot, after, a lot of the, other After things, the decision yeah. is made by the uh, Board of Selectmen. So thank you. Thank you very much for having us here. Uh, we're really pleased that we do have a feasibility study that we can show. We had wanted it for quite a long time, and it just took us a while to get everything put together. But we appreciate the time you've given us. Thank you. Great. Uh, anyone have any questions? Yes, Pete. I'd just like to say that over the last two years, I've worked with the uh, Council on Aging quite readily with this project, and I have never seen a more patient group. If something wasn't right, they just sat there and figured it out and got it right. They really have uh, taken their time, they, and they've worked very hard on this. Thank you, Peter. Any questions? Yes, Bobby. Um, I have one question, a couple of them for you. Um, I went to Holyoke 
and I uh, went in their senior citizen building. Um, they had a computer room. Um, is there anything in this plan for a computer room for the uh, senior citizens? Could I answer that for you? Um, actually, there's quite a contentious element in Holyoke. We had an older IT fellow. Uh, he really thought that having box computers on desks would be a really good idea. We generally recommend that, uh, recommend against that. Um, there, today, most people are with, in fact, at one time we used to say it was laptops, now it's, it's iPads and, and surfaces. The buildings now are all Wi-Fi'd. Um, the classes are often held in a room that's not dedicated just to computers. It's a classroom. You come in, you can either be issued a, a, a laptop or an iPad. You come in and you can go through your software lessons using a smart screen. So, and then you can also go elsewhere and break out into groups uh, in any area in the senior center and join in on a, on a group opportunity using the Wi-Fi system. So we're now, most of our activity rooms or classrooms are now multi-dimensional for both computers and other uses, um, all, mainly because of the technology that's changed in the last five years. Um, the other thing is, have, have you looked for donations? I know um, if you're familiar with Holyoke, they have that giving tree in the front room. Yep. Um, big donations, uh, people in town have, have contributed to it. There are a lot of opportunities that give you an idea that we're currently breaking ground on the um, Walpole Senior Center uh, in about three or four weeks. Um, we worked with the town administrator and uh, several other um, key individuals in town to put together a, a, a fundraising campaign. And uh, we started that about uh, three months ago and they've since have raised about $750,000. Um, both commercially and individually. Um, we actually have a bank that made a very large donation. In Wellesley, there was a single gift, but in Holyoke, you'll see that there's lots of bricks. There's a big brick patio, which we have designed here. That's what we call entry-level giving. Those bricks can sell for $200 a piece, whereas uh, greater, larger donors might be willing to give two or $3,000. But generally, um, in Holyoke, they raised about, um, $800,000 um, on a goal of $1 million. And Holyoke, although it's a very large town, is a town of uh, limited means. And I thought that was a pretty good fundraising uh, effort on their part. There's lots of opportunities for uh, fundraising. Okay. Um, the board, do we want to take a vote or just a, an opinion? Uh, are we in support of this? We, um, we can't really take a vote, I don't think. I mean, I, mean, I don't know what you would want us show, to vote show for. Show support. I mean, um, you, you're, we're perfectly happy to show support. Um, I, I think everybody realizes that we have, um, we have to look at this within the context of all of the other capital uh, right. projects that are coming up. So um, certainly if you would like to um, propose that we support this going forward, um, that, that should be fine, but I mean, we certainly can't take a vote to approve it at this point. Mike? I have a question that's kind of the first time I've seen this, and Jan, and see you there. My parents are very involved with the, with the center for years, and, and there's no question there's a need for something for sure. On the usage figures, uh, 6,000 and 11, uh, 1,400 persons have used it. Is that a normal percentage for most, most towns, or? Our annual usage, and uh, the expert can, will correct me, I think was of the 6,415, we had 1,296, something like that, that actually came in and used it. Those were, those were visits, 25% um, of that, of our senior population. But I also think that that, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jan, uh, yeah. Right. So we had like 1,296 one time, so we don't capture everybody, because the set of the buildings we can't see everybody, they didn't check in. But we had almost 12,000 duplicated in one. So if we have time, we'll see. I can say something. Right. I just wonder how that compared to other. Is that normal usage for a senior center? I don't know. We've done about 24, 25 senior centers in the state of Massachusetts. 
And um, I don't know whether you, any of you have met Emmett Schmarzel, who was up at the Elders Affairs Office. He's, uh, I think, in charge of, of, of reaching oh, out Emmett. to senior centers. Emmett. 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 Emmett, I'm sorry. And Emmett, uh, is, it's very truthful. Generally, our experience has been when the senior center opens, the population that uses it triples uh, almost automatically. I think opening day in Holyoke, we had uh, 1,400 people at the center. Uh, it's never let up. We've doubled the size of the parking lot. Uh, in Duxbury, the lot was doubled in size after it was opened. So what happens is that when you have an, a, a center that isn't able to really offer the programming and the space for the opportunities, people don't come. But they do really come. And what's really amazing, I, I meant to mention this, one of the key issues that I talk about when I lecture around the state and sometimes down in Washington, D.C. and, and Kentucky, um, the, the senior centers are an infrastructure or support within the community, and they do it through three key issues, and it's socialization, nutrition, and exercise. And I think it came out in your, your presentation. Um, the number one issue is socialization. Engagement in the community by the elders uh, really manages healthy aging and aging in your home or, or and uh, nutrition is one of the weak areas for older adults and the senior center offers an opportunity not only to receive food but to understand its importance and then exercise is really key too so those are the three things that this center is trying to do any other questions thank you this is very exciting and we'll be talking about it Repeatedly, I'm sure. <laughs> we'll come back whenever you want us. <laughs> all right, and we might do that. Thank you so much for coming, Thank all you. of you. We appreciate it. Thank you.